Okay, in the last clip we saw how the substage condenser works. Um, what we're going to do, again, this is a substage condenser here. What we're going to do is just show a couple ways that uh, it could be removed possibly by a student. The easiest way to do it is in the front there is a, uh, a screw here that's very easy to get your hands on. If you turn it counterclockwise, it releases the substage condenser from the ring assembly. And you can see I'm able to take it right out. Okay, that's the most likely way in which it could be removed. Now, the other way that can happen is that if you look underneath here, this is the ring assembly, and you see it's held in place by two screws. And those two screws, if you back one off while tightening the other one, it moves the whole assembly to one side. If you do the opposite, it moves it to the other. So we actually use these screws to move them back and forth. Now, if you completely remove both of these screws are completely pulled it back, the ring assembly itself would come out. If that happens, just simply put the ring assembly back, tighten the screws like this. Sometimes it'll come out with the substage condenser uh, attached to it. So anyway, first of all, just decide, dis, uh, discover whether or not the whole ring assembly came apart or if just the substage condenser came out. Again, one way or the other, here's how you put the substage condenser back in. Make sure that your iris diaphragm lever is in the front so you can touch it and you can operate it, and then just simply tighten the screw. So now we've put the substage condenser back in place. Again, we could remove the whole assembly if we took out both of these screws. That's much more unlikely for students to do. Very likely for students to do is to remove or back off that one screw and the substage condenser comes out. If that happens, just put it back, tighten it up, and go about your lesson.